Welcome to today's lesson. This is lesson five. In this lesson, we look at how, as a student teacher, we'll be able to teach the concept of energy, its forms, sources, and the changes that goes on. In our previous lesson, we looked at the concept of energy. How different is it from this lesson? This lesson is going to show you or guide you as to how best you can teach this concept that you have gained from the last lesson to your pupils in the classroom, i.e. your elementary learners. I hope you enjoy the lesson. After the lesson, if you have any inquiries, please send it through my mail. The email address is provided here. The outline of the lesson today would look at the lesson description, the purpose of the lesson, learning outcomes, and learning indicators. All this part of the lesson can be found in your course manual for the semester. Remember that there will be a lesson assessment at the end of the lesson. The reference for the lesson is also provided at the end of the slides. Now let's review our lecture four. Can you mention some energy sources that are being used in Ghana? Again, are you able to define the concept of energy away from the everyday definition of is the ability to do work? Now, mention some examples showing the transformation of energy or energy changes. If you're able to do all this, it means that you got the concept from the last lesson. If not, kindly revisit lesson four to help you answer these questions. Ready for the lesson? If not, why don't you take a, a few seconds break to refresh your mind and then we can move on. If you are ready, let's begin. Lesson description. In this lesson, our discussion will be centered on how to teach energy to elementary school learners. As a student teacher, it is expected that you use the knowledge gathered in designing a lesson on how to teach energy to these learners. Remember that these learners will be of different age and grade levels. How well would you be able to teach this concept? Will you be prepared enough? This lesson is here to guide you. The purpose of the lesson, it is expected that at the end of the lesson, you'll be able to acquire the pedagogical knowledge or skills to teach energy forms and uses to basic elementary school learners. This is backed by the NTS references. For those of us joining us for the first time, NTS stands for the National Teacher Standard. These references can be traced to pages 12 to 14 in the NTS reference book. Learning outcome. We'll be able to learn how to teach energy to the elementary school learners. How are we sure that whatever we are going to do in this lesson would be achieved? If you're able to present an outline or a step-by-step -step approach in teaching energy to the elementary school learner, our objectives or outcomes would have been achieved. To the main thing for today, teaching forms and sources of energy to elementary school learners. I've already talked about the definition of energy, sources, of energy. You can begin by defining energy to your students. Let them do an activity. For example, let one student switch on the lights in the classroom. How about letting a student run out of the class and then ask him questions about the activity that the person did? For the sources, 
you can make mention of the things around you. If we can talk about firewood, batteries, you can go on and categorize the sources of energy under renewable and non-renewable energy source. This is dependent on the level of students that you are teaching. Now the big question, how do you explain these concepts to them? Let's look at activity 1.0. As a teacher, how are you going to teach the concept of energy to your elementary pupils? Explaining what it's meant by sources of energy. You are asked to de design an activity you would carry out in order to explain the concept of energy to your students. Let me give you a few guidelines. In these guidelines, you would be able to know how you can go about this task. Let's take a look at this. The activity to be designed must explore these two things. How energy makes things work. Examples, batteries in a toy and electricity turning our fan blades in our homes. B, how energy can be obtained from many sources in many ways. Can give examples as the sun, the food we take in, electricity. So now, the activity that you are supposed to design would be an activity that should engage your learners throughout the period of the lesson. It should be noted that these activities should rather help the students learn and not distract them. Make sure your learning environment is, in, is conducive for the activity. Again, examples that you are going to cite or use should be examples that are familiar with your students. If you want to give more examples, start from the examples that are familiar to students. Then you can introduce new ones to them. This will help you sustain the interest of your learners. If I look at this second activity, you are supposed to prepare charts or to display a step-by-step -step approach in teaching energy transformation to elementary school learners. This activity has been assigned to you for assessment. Please look it up at the last end of the slides sent to you. This next slide, however, I'll try and give you an overview by citing an example of how best you can go about this chart or this step-by-step -step approach. Let's look at this example. This is an example of a burning um, firewood. In the chart or picture scene, you realize that this is a picture of firewood burning to give light or fire. The sources here has many arrows. These two arrows is indicative of the fact that there are so many things that can go on in order to light up this fire. The constituent could be firewood, kerosene. You can use match in order to create your fire. Whereas another would use firewood, wood shavings and match with no kerosene. This you can talk about with them. Ask the students or the learners how they put up the firewood or how they switch their firewood on in their various homes. You get varying answers from the learners. However, it is expected that these sources would be common among the answers that they will give. After you have had your answers, move on to the forms of energies that these sources bring on board. We can talk about chemical energy by looking at the firewood. Once you are able to link the sources to the various forms, you then explain the changes that goes on as the fire burns. Chemical energy, moving on to heat energy, 
then to light energy. You must ask the pupils what they see first or what they feel first. Is it the light that the fire gives or the heat that comes out of it? Their choice will determine the kind of transformation equation that they write. Remember, you will not get all your students giving you one answer. Don't be haste to brush off any answer given by your students. At this point, I expect you to have a fair idea as to how you can design an activity that will help you teach the concept of energy to your students. If not, there's always another time or another way of going back to the slides. Do that in order to understand clearly what the activity is about. Very well then. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson. If you have any inquiries, please send them to my mail or write it at the comment section. I'll kindly respond to them as soon as practicable. In this COVID-19 era, let's all stay safe, stay home. If you are going out, please wear a protective mask. Wash your hands with soap and the running water. If not, use a hand sanitizer that is alcohol-based. Thank you and see you in lesson six.